The correct quantity of the hormones is then added to the medium after it has been through the autoclave and cooled to approximately 50 degrees centigrade. In this temperature, the agar and other gelling agents still are molten. The medium is then shaken vigorously to mix the added compound before being dispensed in the appropriate culture vessels. Media can be prepared ahead of the time and be stored in a cool, clean cupboard in dark or inside a refrigerator. The next step in stage one of micropropagation is preparation of plant material. The plant material is harvested ideally first thing in the morning when the plant cells are all tergy. Shoot segments, leaves, petiole, bulb scales, etc. can all be used as indicated before. The plant material then is washed under running tap water for 20 minutes to 2 hours, depending on the source of plant material, that is, whether the plant material is field grown or glass house grown. If the pieces of plant material used are small, wrapping them in a piece of gauze or chucks cloth will hold the material intact during the sterilization. Then, the plant material is rinsed in 70% alcohol for 10 to 30 seconds. Alcohol not only kills many microorganisms residing on the surface of the leaves or buds, it also acts as surfactant. Third step is to wash plant material in a chlorine solution, such as sodium or calcium hypochlora. These are sold as commercial household bleach, such as White King. This is a strong chlorine solution and requires to be diluted. We need to dilute this solution to one quarter strength. This gives us chlorine strength of 1% weight per volume. It is best to prepare this solution fresh. To this solution also add a drop of wetting agent, such as Twin 20 or Triton or any non-ionic detergent. The surfactants, or the wetting agent, will improve the surface coverage. The plant material can be washed in this solution for 5 to 20 minutes and sometimes even longer. Modification to this basic procedure that can be used to improve efficiency include mechanical agitation and use of vacuum as demonstrated here. Everything is taken into the laminar flow cabinet and the hypochlorite solution is discarded and the plant material is rinsed two to three times in sterile distilled water. The laminar flow cabinet or transfer hood is a cabinet in which air sucked from outside has passed through very fine filters called HEPA, that stands for High Efficiency Particulated Air. This filtering system ensures that the airflow over the working bench is completely sterile. In fact, HEPA filter catches any particle which is bigger than 0.3 micron in diameter. Since there is a continuous airflow through the inoculation cabinet, it is particularly impossible that anything can pass from the outside room into the cabinet itself. When the cabinet is not in use, the cabinet can be closed from the outside air by use of plastic shields like this. The laminar flow cabinets are also fitted with a UV light, which can be used prior to the time one needs to use the cabinet. UV light is a germicide. It also causes skin cancer and affects the retina in our eyes. So it must only be switched on when the shield is in place. The UV light must be turned off prior to the removal of the shield. 
the motor which draws the air must begin to operate. Now, if you do not have a laminar flow cabinet, a fish tank on its side, like this one, which has been swabbed and sprayed with alcohol, would do just fine. But you have to bear in mind that for a commercial lab, these will not be sufficient. The operator should also be cleaned up, hair tied back, jewelry removed, hands washed and surface sterilized using either 70% alcohol or other compounds such as hexifoam. A clean lab coat and a face mask will reduce chances of accidental contamination. The plant material, as a general rule, is cut to the desired size on a moist, sterile filter paper. It is important to note that any item used inside the laminar flow cabinet must be sterile. That is, the dissecting instruments, such as the scalpels, the scissors, the forceps, and indeed the petri dishes or the papers you use to cut the plant up. Now let us look at the preparation of the explant. The exact method for preparing the explant varies with the kind of explant. In general, all procedures described up to here should be followed. If shoot tips are used, remove the disinfested shoot pieces from the rinsing solution and cut away the enclosing leaves with sharp scalpels or needles to expose the immature shoot tip. Removal of only meristem dome and a few leaf primordia requires very fine micro tools or scalpels and use of a dissecting microscope. If the entire shoot tip is used as explant, the operation is less exacting. In either case, the work must be done quickly and the pieces must be inserted on the gelled medium quickly to minimize desiccation. In other cases, leaf segments, petiole segments, or root segments may be cut following the same instructions. All dissecting instruments need to be sterilized in between cuts. To do that, we can flame them in 70% alcohol and then allow them to cool. Or we can use a bead sterilizer like this one here. The bead sterilizer heats a series of glass beads to 250 degrees centigrade. We only need to insert the instruments in them for about 5 to 10 seconds to kill any microorganisms which may exist on them. There are other equipment used for this purpose, for example, bacticinerator. No matter what it is called or what you use, the objective of all these are to kill any microorganisms which may have survived the process of surface sterilization of the plant material. At initiation stage, it is desirable to use small vessels and put only one explant into each vessel. The reason is that if you use larger vessels, which you can put more than one explant in, if one of these explants become infested in the vessel, you must discard the whole lot, whereas in a small vessel, you contain the infestation of the one explant to that explant only. These cultures are then transferred into the growth room with diffused light. The light intensity in a growth room like this is about 50 micromole per square meter per second, which is about 1 50th of sunlight in a cloud-free day. So it is not very strong. The photo period, as a general rule, is set at around 16 hours day and 8 hours night. Although this might be altered, depending on the species and the time of the year you are doing the culture. The temperature of a growth room for most temperate plant is 25 degrees centigrade. 28 degrees for tropical plants like banana and 18 degrees for alpine plants. I need to indicate here that in most micropropagation operations, the explants are placed initially on a medium containing only basic salts and sugar, but without hormones. If the explant contains phenolic or other substances that exude from the cut surface, 
and inhibit development, charcoal, ascorbic acid, citric acid, or other substances may be added to the medium to prevent the effects. Using antioxidants, such as ascorbic acid or citric acid, in the preliminary wash also may be useful. Use of liquid medium in the initial stage and frequent changes for several days may help leach out the phenolic compounds. The contaminants, consisting of yeast and various species of fungi and bacteria, usually appear on the medium surface within a few days or a week as white or opaque slime or as variously colored colonies. Sometimes black spores and mycelium can be observed. When these contaminants can be identified visually, cultures containing them are quickly discarded. Contaminated culture vessels should be sterilized in the autoclave without removing the cover to avoid contaminating the laboratory. Some bacteria contaminants, such as Bacillus, Erwinia, or Pseudomonas, sometimes remain inside the plantlets without being detected until late in the culture period. These are the cause of what we call the latent infestation. Procedure to identify this contaminant may need to be included in a large commercial lab. Antibiotics are sometimes used in the medium to improve control of bacterial growth. However, the prolonged use of antibiotics should be avoided. Plant preservative mixture, or PPM as is also known, is a new product which reduces infestation rate dramatically when added to culture medium. Clean cultures from this stage are then transferred onto the next stage, which is the multiplication stage. This stage usually takes about four weeks. To summarize, the purpose of stage one is to produce axenic or clean cultures. Now let us look at stage two, which is the multiplication stage. The function of this stage is to induce multiple shoot development. This may involve the stimulation of axillary shoots, the initiation of adventitious shoots on excised shoots, leaves, bulb scales, flower scapes, cotyledons, and so on. The initiation of callus from the cut surface. Therefore, the medium selected varies with species, cultivar, and the type of explant to be used. Control of development is achieved by manipulating the levels of auxins and cytokinins in the medium. If axillary shoots are desired, a moderate levels of cytokinin, such as BAP, kinetin, or 2IB, at concentrations of 1 to 5 micromolar, are used. The auxin level must be kept very low or omitted altogether. To develop adventitious shoots on the explant, a somewhat higher cytokinin level is needed. For callus formation, increased auxin levels are also needed, but must be adjusted an appropriate level of cytokinin. The culturing is done by cutting off the shoots and transferring the base to the new medium. Elongated shoots may be laid horizontally on medium surface, acting as a type of layering, often stimulates lateral shoots to develop. The number of propagules produced for transfer every four to six weeks varies from 5 to 25 or more from each explant. Multiplication stages may be repeated several times to build up the supply of material to a predetermined level for subsequent rooting and acclimatization stages. During these multiplication stages, off-type propagules like these ones here sometimes appear. Depending on the kind of plant, and method of regeneration. Transferring cultures onto a hormone-free medium sometimes overcome this problem. So, to summarize to here, the purpose of multiplication stage is to produce numerous shoots for transfer to the next stage, which is the rooting stage. 
The purpose of this stage is to prepare the plantlets for transplanting from the artificial heterotrophic environment of the test tube to an autotrophic free living existence in the greenhouse and onto their ultimate location. This preparation may involve a change in the physiology of the plantlet so as to stimulate photosynthesis, nutrient and water absorption through roots and resistance to desiccation and to pathogen. At this stage, propagules can be handled in three basic ways. First, individual cuttings can be made and planted directly into a rooting medium in mist or under high humidity with or without rooting hormones. In other words, we treat them like soft cuttings. Second, individual propagules may be recultured into new containers in a sterile medium with reduced or omitted cytokinin. An increased concentration